All right. Well, what I've got here, a little bit of fun. This is a Decapot. It's a Kelvin voltage divider. And uh, this particular one is a 500 ohm uh, unit. It's got three decades of, of adjustment available here. And then a, a fine adjustment on the, as a fourth. And uh, as a Kelvin voltage divider, what this does is that each decade uh, represents a constant impedance or resistance in this case. Um, you really don't you don't change the load on the unit, at least in the perfect Kelvin unit. Uh, you don't change the, uh, uh, the load. But you do change the, um, the tap across the resistors that are in the chain. I'll have to show you that in a diagram in a little bit. What I'm going to do right now is I'm opening this unit up. We're going to take a look at the insides of it. See how it was made. and See if we can figure out what makes these things so, uh, so special. These units typically run anywhere from... Yeah, I've seen them run them from about 250 up to about as much as a thousand dollars, believe it or not. Maybe not this particular unit. This is a 500 ohm unit. The ones I have seen have been mostly around 1700 ohms. But it's the the same make, Decapot. Um, so this would be a relatively expensive unit nonetheless. Alright, let's go ahead and open this up and take a look. Okay, this is just a uh, metal shell here, and inside we have a strange looking concoction, don't we? Well, what we have, this is the first string of resistors that goes around they're wire wound. They're wire wound on flat plates. Um, that would be to minimize the um, inductance. These things can be used on a on a low frequency AC. Uh, as you increase an AC, the impedance generated within the uh, the coil would would change the resistance values. So that would change the way the unit works. But as long as you're low frequency and I'm guessing that that would mean less than 10,000 Hertz um, that it would divide appropriately and then each successive layer runs off of the uh, the switch that's you know like so here's the main layer the top layer is the biggest one on the bottom and I can see the elements up in the top here moving in the middle you can maybe you can see that middle wafer moving, and then finally the top, which is the lowest unit down there. Okay, so now I've got the Decapot connected up to a 10 volts precision source, capable of giving me the 20 milliamps I'm going to need to push through this pot at 10 volts, but with the accuracy that I want. So I've got a 10 volt source coming into my pot and I am looking at the output and as you can see right now alright so now you can see I've got 9.99 uh, .99 volts 9.98 now 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 let's do the middle 9.8 Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's do the end. The nine. Here we go to eight volts. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. One point one one 
volts. One one three. Zero. So I've got three decades of, of control, so I was able to read down to the hundredth of a volt in this case, all the way up to nine volts. So 9.99 .99 down to one, there would be zero, zero, zero. So from 0, 0.00 all the way up to 9.99, .99. so three decades of resolution from one voltage. That's what I wanted to show you. Thanks. Okay, well, I've got uh, several pieces of equipment hooked up here to this deck of pot. What's going on? Let's start with this um, this unit right here. This is a 10 volt reference source. You put in uh, anything from like uh, uh, 12 to 35 volts in, pardon me, and you get 10 volts out very, very accurately. 10 volts out. It's like 10 volts and you get like five decimal places. But Anyway, you can look this up on uh, on eBay. It is available. It cost me about 60 bucks. Well worth it. Gives 8 milliamps of output. And when it was calibrated, it was calibrated very, very, very closely. Anyway, I'm feeding the, a 14 volt signal into that uh, reference. I'm getting 10 volts out. I'm taking that 10 volts and I'm bringing it through a series resistor here, in this case 4500 ohms. Uh, I wanted a high precision resistor because the resistors in the decapod are, are good to a hundredth of a percent. Then I decided to use this resistostat unit which also has resistance at a hundredth of a percent. So I'm dropping 4500 ohms, 0.01%. Uh, and then uh, that drops my voltage down to 1 volt from 10. So I've got 9 volts across that 4500. I've got 1 volt across the, uh, the pot. And right now we see that we have 0.999, so 999 millivolts. And I can step it down. So let's go ahead and uh, take it down. We got 998, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, let's leave it at 1. All right. Now we're going to turn the middle dial. We're going to go 9 to 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We'll leave it there. And then let's take a look at Go ahead and take ourselves up so we're not looking at the last insignificant figure here. Let's go ahead and take the first digit. This is range 1. We'll go to 8. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Now you tell me, where can you get a millivolt reference with that kind of ease? Plus or minus one millivolt at this particular step. We can take her down to zero now. Zero, zero, one. And let's go ahead and make that zero. 
So there you are. So this pot, with that reference, a power supply, and I've got a 0 to 999 millivolt reference source that I can use for meter calibrations, oscilloscope calibrations, bridge units, anything like that. Fairly sophisticated output with relative ease. I mean, I could replace that box back there with a 4500 ohm resistor. So I have a resistor with this. I have that $60 investment there and a power supply. Crude power supply. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Not at all in a box and I got myself a reference. What is this Kelvin Varley unit? Well, I did a little research for you here. we have we've got three banks of resistances and then we have a potentiometer coming off of it and off of the center of the pot we pick our output our input is at the first bank of resistors here now there's 11 resistors in each bank but You take two of the resistors in the in any one of the banks and, and you parallel them with the entire resistance of the next bank. So if I have 50 ohm resistors in this first bank, and uh, then I go to parallel two of them, well, two 50 ohm resistors is 100 ohms. Now let's say I choose in the second bank to have the entire string of resistances in that bank add up to 100 ohms. Then when I put the two of them in parallel, those two resistors in this first bank in parallel with two resistors on the other, or, or, or excuse me, with the equal resistance on the other, become 50 ohms. So they become, two resistors become equivalent to one. And I wind up with 10 resistances in this first string of 50 ohms for a total of 500 ohms. Now, in the second string, I've got the same situation. 11 resistances, but the third string is picking two of them at a time. These switches move in unison, two at a time. And I'm going to make my third bank total resistance equivalent to these, the sum of these two resistors in the second bank. So if the, if, in order for me to have paralleled a uh, 100 ohms with the two resistances in the first bank, then this whole string had to be 100 ohms. And since I know I'm going to parallel two of these resistors and make them into one, then I've got ten equal resistances. And this one resistance has got to be equal to one-tenth of the entire string. So one-tenth of a hundred, which would be ten ohms. So I have to parallel something with these two ten-ohm resistors so that their resistance becomes ten. I've got... 10 ohm resistors in this string, so two 10 ohm resistors here would be 20 ohms. And if 10 resistors in this string are going to be equal to 20 ohms, then the resistors must be equal to 2 ohms apiece. So all of these resistors in the third bank should be equal to 2 ohms. If that's the case, then I've got 20 ohms of resistance going in parallel with two tens that are in series, or 20 ohms. So together they form a 10 ohm resistor, and these 11 10 ohm resistors now act as if there was 10 10 ohm resistors. And that's all a little bit confusing, but follow it and it makes sense. And then the, in the third range, I'm picking two resistors at a time and I'm paralleling them with, uh, with a potentiometer and a, and a parallel resistor. At least the parallel resistance of this string has got to equally the value of these two resistors, which would be 2 and 2 is 4, 4 ohms. So I'm going to have a total resistance here of, of 4 ohms, and then 
I'm adjusting with this pot to give myself just a little bit of adjustment capability up and down on the output. That essentially is how the Kelvin Varley works. You can read about it online, it might help. But as you can see, this pot's working great. It gives you some great capabilities. It's fun to work with. Um, so, I know that they ran about $5,500 new and that they run anywhere from about, uh, I'd say about $150 to $800 on eBay. Uh, so good luck on your uh, bidding. Thank you for listening and uh, have fun. Bye.